This is a special video to celebrate the 10,000 subscribers, and also to try to keep up with all your questions. Some of them come up regularly, and I think it's best to answer them visually. So, let's do this now. First question, what's an ideal starter project on Raspberry Pi? Well, it's hard to answer without knowing anything about you and your interests, but I can give you some general recommendations. For me, a great first project for a beginner is something that can be useful eventually, it will keep you motivated, doesn't require additional hardware, and is easy enough to make sure you'll get to the end. In my boot camp course, one of the first project I do with you is building a media center. I find it's a good fit with the previous description, no additional hardware, not complicated, and can be useful for your family. Another similar idea is to set up Nextcloud on your Raspberry Pi, to keep backups of your files. If you are not convinced yet, I have a complete video on this topic, with 15 other ideas that may be of interest for you, watch it to find your next project. If your goal is to build a retro gaming station, you may wonder how much RAM you really need for it, as developers doesn't really give any tips about this. On the RetroPie's website, all Raspberry Pi models are included, so we can't guess that the RAM quantity doesn't truly matter. Same conclusion with the Recalbox website, where the Pi Zero 2 is recommended, 512 megabytes only. Overall, I don't think it's a big deal. Remember that the Nintendo 64 had only 4 megabytes of RAM, so even a Raspberry Pi 4 with 1 gigabyte is plenty to run N64 games. I guess it might be more important if you try to play more recent games like PlayStation 2 or PC ROMs, and more RAM may also help for other process like browsing cover images, system updates, etc. If you can afford it, and may use the Raspberry Pi for other things, I would recommend a Pi 4 with 4GB of RAM at least. I do everything with mine without any problem. If not, any Raspberry Pi 4 or Pi Zero 2 should be fine for retro gaming. What's the ideal SD card size for a Raspberry Pi? To give you an idea, all my SD cards are between 16GB and 64GB. But I'm probably not the best example, as I try many projects for this channel, without generally keeping them in the long term. There is no miracle answer to this question, as it pretty much depends on how much data you'll store on it. 16 gigabytes is enough to install almost anything on your Raspberry Pi, but additional space might be required over time. Nextcloud doesn't take much, but if you use it to back up your computer, 16 gigabytes is probably not enough. Same thing with Kodi or RetroPie. Also take a look at the pricing of bigger cards when you order your next SD card. The difference is not always as important as you might think. And sometimes, using an external hard drive is something you need to consider. I have a complete video on this topic, I'll let you watch it for more guidance to answer this question. You are very interested in the future Raspberry Pi 5 release, but I don't have good news for you. As you know, finding a Raspberry Pi currently is pretty complicated. Most resellers are always out of stock, and except if you can afford expensive products, you have to be patient. Last I heard Evan Upton talking about this, releasing a Raspberry Pi 5 wasn't the priority. And this shortage of components should not help. A few months ago, the idea was to work first on a Raspberry Pi 4 Model A, before any plan to start a Raspberry Pi 5. I can't say if it's still the schedule they have in mind or not, and they like to surprise us. The Raspberry Pi 400 and Pico were a little out of the usual schedule we're used to. The Raspberry Pi Zero 2 wasn't really expected either. So, the timing is hard to predict. What about the components? Same thing. The Raspberry Pi 4 is already good enough for most project, which may also explain this delay before a new model. I guess they will keep the same base, improve the existing components like the CPU, and then add new things to justify a new model. I hope that we'll move slowly from SD cards to M2 SSD. Recent updates go in this direction, with USB and network boot, and more and more users are using them. Other changes may include 4 USB 3.0 ports or even USB-C, better network cards and more RAM. We'll see in the coming months what direction they take, but don't be impatient, it's not for tomorrow, maybe not even in 2022. Raspberry Pi OS is not known for its beautiful interface, but you can always improve it yourself after the installation. First, there is a tool hidden in the main menu, 
to select another theme, or tweak a few things about the desktop interface. You can also install new themes from the package manager, use the search engine, and search theme. Using PyApps is even easier, as it will do everything for you. I explain everything in more details in my course, so feel free to check it out if you need further explanations. I got this question a few times too, how to update Raspberry Pi OS Buster to Bullseye without having to reinstall everything. Well, the official recommendation is to not do this. It's better to install the latest Raspberry Pi OS from scratch on another media, reinstall your apps and make sure everything worked correctly. Upgrading to a new major release can break your current setup, and there are still many bugs with the latest version, so it's probably better to test it separately. Anyway, if you have solid backups and want to give it a try, here is the procedure. First, make sure your current system is up to date. Run APT update and upgrade to install the latest version of everything. Reboot your system if needed. Then edit the package's source by using this command. It tells APT the server URL to use for the updates. We'll change it to download the packages corresponding to Bullseye. Save and exit once done. Run apt update again to download the new packages list, and apt upgrade to install them. Once done, the Debian version of your system is now updated. A reboot is recommended. You can then check if everything still work as expected. A full upgrade is probably a good idea at this point, to get the latest version of all the dependencies. Good luck with this. I also got a few questions about my SSH client, so I'll use this video to answer them. Putty is often the default choice, but it's not always ideal as for features and appearance. I also used MOBA Xterm for a long time, in my job and for personal use. But I recently switched to this one, Termius. I find it more pleasant to use. You can add as many hosts as you want, it will remember your settings, like passwords, keys, etc., so you can quickly connect to any of them. There are many advanced features I don't use, and even paid ones. I think you can synchronize your sessions with other devices, or as a backup in the cloud, and fun features like that. Anyway, there is a free version available. Check the Microsoft Store or their website to install it on your computer. I don't think you can install it on Raspberry Pi OS, but it's not my goal there. If your APT cache takes too much space on your SD card, there are a few commands you can try, to recover some of it. First, AutoClean will remove packages from the cache that can no longer be downloaded, older versions. It won't work all the time, but it's the first thing you can try, it's safe. AutoRemove will uninstall all packages that are no longer necessary on your system. And try to use the purge option with APT, when you uninstall a big application or service. This will also remove the configuration files. Except from that, there is no magic trick but you can check my article on the topic to locate the biggest files on your SD card and remove them safely. This is a big question, how to optimize a Raspberry Pi for desktop usage. I did the experiment when the Raspberry Pi came out a few years ago, but I need to try again now, with new hardware and operating systems available, it won't be the same answer. First, there are easy answers. Desktop usage requires a powerful setup. So, I would use a Raspberry Pi 4 or 400 with at least 4 GB of RAM and a SSD. For the operating system, I don't think there is a definitive answer. It will depend on your exact goals and Linux level. Personally, I would probably test a customized version of Raspberry Pi OS, with GNOME or KDE. But Ubuntu can also be a good choice, with Pop OS for example. Manjaro and OpenSUSE may also be considered, as they work really well, but personally, I would stay on Debian. Then you need to spend a bit of time to find good apps that work decently on Raspberry Pi. Obviously, you have the basics, like LibreOffice, Chromium or VLC. But you may have to spend more time to look for specific apps, depending on your exact needs. Don't forget to install Pi apps, that will make your life easier during the setup phase. I will let you know if try again. This is probably a good idea for a future article and video.
There are tons of packages and apps available in the default Raspbian repository, but not all of them. So, what to do when you can't use APT or the package manager? First, it may be that Raspberry Pi is not supported at all. So, that's probably the first thing to check. Use your favorite search engine to find if it's possible, and which method you should use. But, to give you an answer, there are a few possibilities. Maybe you can add a new repository in APT, that will connect to a server maintained by the editor or a third party, and then install the app with APT as usual. Or perhaps, the developers have a package release supporting the Raspberry Pi architecture, ARM for ARM64, that you can install manually. Sometimes, they don't have these, but you can download the source code from their GitHub project and compile it directly on the Raspberry Pi. Also remember to check Pi apps. As they tend to include apps that are not available in Pi apps but can still work on Raspberry Pi. It's often the easiest solution. There are also many videos on this channel where I explain how to install specific apps that aren't available in APT, so make sure to check there too. Like for my SSH client, another question I got several times is how to customize the terminal appearance on Raspberry Pi OS. Well, it's not complicated. You can use the app menu to access the settings, and customize your profile with background color, font family and size, or things like that. I try to use a bigger font with colors easy to read when I'm recording a video, but obviously, you can choose whatever you prefer for your own setup. In the past, I also used Terminator a lot. Which is a custom terminal, that you can customize, but that also includes nice features, like a split view for different terminals. Feel free to give it a try if you use your terminal a lot. I hope this video answered some of your questions, or at least made things clearer. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have other ones for me, I will do my best to answer some of them. See you soon.